What up everybody? Instruct the Beats back again with our time unit here. Today we are finding the elapsed time while crossing hours. So let's wake on up and get to work. Our objective today, today I will be able to find the elapsed time when given the start time and the end time. So here we have our timeline that we've been looking at during these lessons. Um, and you know if you've been with us for any of our time unit lessons, we love our mountains and hills strategy, right? So here is how we mark our timeline. Our mountains equal one hour and our hills are our minutes, okay? And our, they could be one minute hills, two minute hills, five minute hills, 59 minute hills. It doesn't matter as long as they represent minutes and our mountains are representing our hours. So when we take a look at our story we've been talking about, we know Juan and Alexander left for their game at 7 p.m. It took them one hour to get there. Their game was two hours and 34 minutes long, and it ended at 10.34. So our start time for our event was 7 p.m. The end time for our event was 10.34 p.m. And the elapsed time, which is the time in between the start time and the end time, or in other words, the amount of time that an event took, was 3 hours and 34 minutes. Those are the math vocabulary words that we've been talking about during this unit. We have already taken the start time and the elapsed time and found the end time. We've taken the end time and elapsed time and went backwards in time to find the start time. Today, we're going to be giving you the start time and the end time, and you're trying to find the amount of time in between those. If you've done the third grade lesson with us, you'll already know these steps, but here are our steps for finding the elapsed time. Our steps that we're going to be using today to find our elapsed time is when you have the start time, you want to go to the first friendly number, right? Our first multiple of 10. From there, if you're going to be crossing over an hour, you want to go to the next closest hour, okay? And you wanna keep jumping hours until you get to the hour of the end time. And then we're going to go to the end time, okay? So you're gonna have several different pieces to, to your timeline. And at the end, we're gonna add up all the time that we jumped that's on our timeline, and that will be our elapsed time. Now that might've been confusing, so let's do an example problem together our I do problem. So t go ahead and just watch me do this problem. It's not in your notes, so that way you can kind of see my strategy, right? So we know here at Instruct Beats, we love our sides check strategy. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write a statement. My question asked me, how long did he play for? So my statement's going to say, he played for blank time. And I know I'm gonna come back here and it's gonna be either hours or minutes, but for right now, I don't know what that's gonna be yet. So I just put time. I'm looking for anything about time or what he was playing. Gavin wanted to play video games on Saturday. He began to play at 12.36 p.m. I know that's important because that's my start time. His mom finally had enough. He probably wasn't listening to her. And so she unplugged the PS4. No! 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 no. At 4.24 p.m. Okay. How long did he play for? I know that they gave me my start time and my end time. And so this is an elapsed time problem. So we develop our plan by drawing our start time, elapsed time, and end time. Okay, we're going to plug in 12.36 uh, p.m. for our start time because that's when he began to play. And then his luck ran out at 4.24 p.m. I'm looking for the elapsed time. So I know here that we love our mountains and hills strategy. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my timeline. All right. And I'm going to label my start time here, 1236 PM. And I'm going to remember my first step, which is I want to get to the first friendly number. And if I'm at 36, my first friendly number is going to be 40. So I need to add four minutes here to get to 1240. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to write down those four minutes because I put it on my number line. I write it down in my elapsed time. From there, I'm going to go 20 minutes because I know 20 minutes will get me to one o'clock. Now I'm going to put one o'clock down here just to kind of see it. And I'm going to write down 20 minutes up there. Now I'm at the closest hour. Okay. So I'm, if I'm at one o'clock, I'm trying to get to four. So I'm going to add three mountains 
Okay, and each one's going to be one hour. And if I do one, then I add hour, that'd be two, three, four. So now I'm at four o'clock. And if I'm at four, I'm trying to get to 424, I just need a 24 minute hill here. And you know what? I did not write down my hours, shame on me. I have three hours over here, okay? And I don't line them up with my minutes because otherwise I might accidentally add three hours to 20 minutes and think it was 23 minutes. And so when I add my 24 minutes, I'm also going to line that up with my minutes and that's going to take me to the time she unplugged it at 4.24 p.m., okay? So that is my end time. So my next step is I simply just need to add up all the elapsed time I added to my timeline. When I do that, okay, I have three hours, there we go, and that's going to be 48 minutes. So he got pretty lucky on a Saturday and he got to play for three hours and 48 minutes. And I'm gonna erase the word time because otherwise my sentence no longer makes sense. So that's how you do the elapsed time, okay? You still organize it just like you normally would for an elapsed time problem. You draw your number line, you put your start time, and then you're just trying to get to your first friendly number and then your first hour. And from there, it was actually pretty easy, right? You just add your hours, and then at the end, you add your last hill. Let's do one together now. So I just watched Frozen 2. Um, I've had to listen to the book on tape in my car about 40 times because I have a three-year-old. It's been kind of tough, so Kristoff's name was stuck in my head. Kristoff arrived at the ice lake at 4.55 p.m. He left at 6.25 p.m. How long was he at the lake? All right, so we're going to do this one together. This is in your notes, so go ahead and write this down. That way you have a perfect example to look at when you're doing your practice. And my statement's going to say he was at the ice lake or at the lake for blank time. When I go back and identify, I'm going to be looking for anything about the ice lake or lake and the time. So he arrived at the ice lake at 4.55 p.m. He left at 6.25 and you want to know how long he was at the lake. So I'm going to label my start time, my elapsed time, and my end time. And I'm going to write down 4.55 because that was when the event of him being at the lake started. And I'll put p.m. there. My end time when he left the lake which finished the event was 625 and I have a question mark. So now I've identified, I've started to develop my plan. I need to solve this with my timeline. So I'm going to put my start time on there. Okay, so 455 p.m. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna to get to the first friendly number. So actually that's in one step because if I add a hill of five minutes, that takes me to five o'clock PM. So that one is pretty easy. And now don't forget, you need to add your five minutes to the time to your elapsed time. So now I'm going to, I know my end time is 625. So I'm going to add my mountain here. And if I add five plus one, obviously that's going to be 6 PM. And I need to add that one hour. Again, don't forget, don't line up your hours and minutes because you might accidentally add them and you should not add one hour to five minutes and think you got six minutes or six hours. So now I'm at 6 p.m. Now it's pretty easy because I just need to take a 25 minute hill to get to my end time of 6.25 p.m. I need to add that obviously to my elapsed time. And now I'm done. I went from my start time to my end time. I just need to add up my elapsed time, which is going to be one hour and 30 minutes or in other words, one and a half hours. So he was at the lake for one hour and 30 minutes. Here's how you try. If you feel very comfortable with this, you can go ahead and pause it, solve this problem by yourself, and then push play to check it. If you are not there yet, that's all right. Growth mindset, right? It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. You can go ahead and do this as another we do problem. So hopefully you just paused it and checked it. And the first thing you should have done, right, was written your sides check problem strategy over here. So you cross it out as you go. And my statement's going to say blank time passed from start to end, okay? And you could have written from the time I started to the time I ended. Um, as long as it's a complete sentence and it's detailed, that's okay. So if I say from start to end, I feel pretty good about that as well. So I'm looking for anything about the start time, the end time, or any time that has passed. This is obviously just based on my statement and the fact you're doing a 
elapsed time lesson and elapsed time problem. So I started working on the elapsed time song, which is fantastic, my dad, at 7.45 a.m. I got done at 1.35 p.m. Sorry, how much time passed? So the tricky thing here you need to pay attention to is you're going from morning to afternoon. You're going to pass 12. You know that already because your start time was a.m. and your end time was p.m. Let's go ahead and organize our information into start, elapsed, end, end. And I know that I started at 7.45 a.m. I know that I ended at 1.35 p.m. And again, I know I'm going to be crossing over 12 because I went from morning to afternoon. So let's go ahead and draw a nice long timeline. As always, the first thing I'm going to do is put my start time on there. Okay. And I want to get to my friendly number. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a five minute hill. Now you might know 15 gets you eight, eight o'clock and you can do that too, right? You might not do your timeline the exact same way I did it. And that's okay. As long as it, A, you got it right. B, you used the strategy to show you understood what was happening. And C, you feel comfortable with the hills that you used. If I take a five minute hill, that's going to put me at 750. Okay, which means I'm going to take a 10 minute hill now and I'm going to go to 8 o'clock. All right, now I'm going to stop there because I forgot to write it down. So I had 5 minutes and then I had 10 minutes. And again, if you use different intervals, that's totally okay. Now I know that I'm trying to get to 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mountains. I'm going to go to 9, 10, 11, and 12. So I'm, I did all four at once. Again, if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can just write them down one at a time and write down 9, 10, 11, 12. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. So now I'm at 12 and I just crossed the 12, which means I went to PM. I'm now in the afternoon and I need to write down my four hours over here in my running log that I'm keeping underneath elapsed time. Now I'm at 12. I need to go one more mountain to get to 1 p.m. So now I'm going to add another hour over here. And now I'm at 1. I'm trying to get to 35. So obviously I just add a 35 minute hill, which is going to take me to my end time of 1.35. And I want to write that down. When I On my timeline, I've gone from my start time to my end time, which means I just need to add up my total elapsed time. And I'm going to do that over here because when you do that, you're going to get 50 minutes and you're going to have five hours. So the total elapsed time that I worked on that song was five hours and 50 minutes. Hopefully after walking through these last three lessons, you can use the mountain and the hill strategy to help you solve any type of elapsed time problem. You can find your start time, you can find your elapsed time, or you can find your end time. What I hope you took from it was it's the same strategy for all three types of questions. You just have to develop your plan and use your number lines. As always, we really appreciate you guys taking your time to learn math with us today. Please check out our lapse time song. If you haven't done it yet, please like and subscribe. We would love to have you join our Instructor Beats family. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you would like to, we'd love to have you follow us on those social media sites as well. Thank you again. Instruct the Beats, out.